Good afternoon, Dr. Henry. Uh, could you get a comment from you, your preliminary assessment, please, of this story out of South Africa and out of the UK about some concerns about AstraZeneca not being particularly effective against mild to moderate COVID illness. I believe the South African government has suspended use of it right now. And I see in the UK they're saying that uh, the problem with these variants may mean that uh, herd immunity is not a realistic target. We may just simply have to learn to live with uh, COVID-19. Yeah, so these are things we're obviously watching very carefully. Um, you know, the AstraZeneca vaccine is uh, has submitted for a notice of compliance with Health Canada, and they are continuing to review and revise, and uh, um, we expect that it will be approved for use at some point um, in the coming weeks. Uh, the other part of it, though, is what we're seeing with countries around the world. So the uh, European Medicine Agency, the EMEA, uh, which approves uh, drugs for use in Europe, um, approved uh, AstraZeneca last week. Um, but different countries have chosen to take different restrictions. So in uh, Germany, for example, it's only approved for use in, in adults uh, from 18 to, to, I believe it's 55 or 60. And a number of other countries are doing the same thing. I think there's nine or ten now around the world that have restricted it to use in, in adults. And part of the reason is we know that the messenger RNA vaccines, the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, work really well in older people. Um, and we have less data to support uh, whether the AstraZeneca vaccine works as well in older people. It does seem to work in younger people, and there's uh, but the data is, is not simple. Uh, there were a number of different trials that were done, including in South Africa. So yes, uh, we've heard that it does not work as well, and particularly for mild or moderate illness. Um, it does seem to have effects, uh, some benefit for hospitalization and more severe illness, but uh, particularly in younger people. Um, but the South African variant uh, does make that concerning. There was also worries that uh, both the messenger RNAs would have uh, would have to be adjusted, particularly for the South African variant. Um, the one in the UK, most of these uh, vaccines seem to um, seem to be very effective against. So I know there's uh, data being shared with our National Advisory Committee on Immunization, who makes those decisions for Canada on who the uh, the vaccine should be used in, and we're watching that, of course, very carefully, which is goes back to the the whole. Um, thinking that we have right now is that we need to understand these variants in our communities and how they're spreading and who they're spreading in and control them as best we can so that we do have effective immunization programs if and when we get the vaccine and it's starting to come again um, as quickly as possible. I will also say that you know we we've also uh, been watching uh, what's happening in the UK with the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine, and it does seem to be very effective um, in preventing most illness in uh, particularly in younger people. But they're using it as well in older people. So this is something we'll continue to watch. I know there's data being discussed uh, even today uh, with NASI um, in more detail, and I don't have the. Uh, access to that yet, but uh, yes, we're. Um, it's very concerning that uh, South Africa is taking a pause on it. I'm also really interested in seeing uh, the results out of India, where um, they're using uh, the same vaccine in, in large numbers. So, uh, those are all things that uh, we're working through uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada and our National mm -hmm. Advisory Committee on Immunization to better understand.